Extra. Welcome to this edition of Riz Extra. We're talking with renowned writer and uh, author Robert Fisk, who writes for the British newspaper The Independent. His incisive work can be found there. Good to have a chance to talk with you uh, for this Riz Extra section. I'm going to kick off with a question about the U.S. Uh, election. Obviously, a lot of people are curious about that. How do you think U.S. foreign policy towards the uh, Middle East will change if Barack Obama is elected president? Not at all. You know, there are some presidents who come into power on the Democratic side, uh, Carter's an obvious example, Clinton, who actually believe that once they have power and they've bowed and nodded to all the powerful forces and lobby groups that they have to to become president, that they can actually make a change. But they find, once they're in power, that U.S. policy is so deeply locked into its totally one-sided attitude towards the Middle East, which is unconditional support, right or wrong, for Israel, and constant cajoling of Arabs, either with UN Security Council resolutions, which they must obey, which the Israelis don't in the case of 242, of course. And um, on top of that, there is a complete incomprehension on the part of most American political leaders of what the Arab world is about, which always amazes me. You know, the United States is thick with immensely well-funded uh, university departments, you know, Harvard, Princeton, Berkeley, a Department of Islamic Affairs, Department of Muslim Affairs, Department of Arab History, and they don't seem to have the slightest effect on the President or the Vice President or the S Secretary of State. Uh, once they go into the Middle East, it's the same old twaddle that we've heard all over before. And then, uh, and the, in the case, for example, of Bush, we had Karen Wright coming out saying, it's not American foreign policy that's wrong, it's the presentation of it, which is ridiculous. Now, uh, did Barack Obama uh, do himself a lot of harm in the Arab world when he said that Israel, uh, that Jerusalem should remain the undivided capital of well, Israel? Well, he did, but only because the Arabs were stupid enough to think he was going to make a change. You know, I mean, they, they don't understand American politics. He's going to say that, and he will continue to say it in one form or another. It's interesting that at least he hasn't promised to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, but that might yet come. Watch this space, as they say. Of course, Republicans in the U.S. Uh, believe that George Bush's legacy, legacy will be defined by the way he handled 9-11. To what extent do people in the Arab world link that, that same thing to his legacy? I think Republicans believe that the, um, the legacy of Bush is going to be the financial crisis and the catastrophe in Iraq. I think they realize that. The Republicans or the Arab world? Oh, I'm talking about the Republicans. Yeah. That was your first part yeah. of the question. The Arab world, they still haven't really come to understand or to deal with. I hate this sort of anthropological come to terms with 9-11. Um, there's still this constant belief that it's a huge conspiracy theory, that Israel did it, that the American government. You know, every time I give a lecture anywhere in the world, Armenia, Cork Islands, Melbourne, there's always a raver who stands up at the end and says, why don't you admit, Mr. Fisk, that George Bush did 9-11? And I always have the same reply, that George Bush has screwed up everything he's done in the Middle East. Do you really think he could do 9-11? But the Arabs haven't even got as far as getting that question into their minds. And many people expect that before uh, George Bush's term ends that there may be a strike by the U.S. or Israel on Iran. Iran. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you think that that is the case, and, and what would be the outcome, the knock-on effects in the Middle East if it happens? Look, I'll give you two small examples of what my reply to be, would be to that. Number one is, um, I don't believe they're going to strike Iran, but number two, I got it wrong about the Iraqi invasion, as Cy Hirsch keeps pointing out to me from Washington. Uh, so, you know, I may have that wrong. Uh, number two, and I think much more important, is that you know, we as journalists are not telling the whole story about Iran. It was the Shah of Iran who wanted nuclear facilities. It was Ayatollah Khomeini who closed them down originally. And it was only when Saddam started using gas, weapons of mass destruction, precursors that came from America and Germany, of course, that Khomeini was induced to reopen the nuclear facilities. That bit of the story has been thrown away, you see, because mm -hmm. Saddam was our man at the time. Look, um, if there is a strike, I think the Iranians will go for American warships in the Gulf, American bases in Iraq. There'll be a Hezbollah Israeli. Uh, conflict. Um, for example, in Qatar, it is a fact, I know, that the Emir wants the American base to be moved a little bit further away from Doha, i.e., if there are missiles flying around, they mustn't hit the uh, Qatari capital. And since I visit Doha, I'm very keen on that idea. But <laughs> I don't want missiles to fly on anyone. <laughs> the true. fact of the matter is, the war would spread very quickly, and the Iranians will make sure it does. Now, of course, we talked about Obama and, and the hopes that many people around uh, the world have for him, believing there might be change, and I know you think that isn't necessarily the case. What about the response of the region, the Arab region, to a McCain presidency? To what extent do they fear perhaps it might be the uh, continuation of uh, George W. Bush's policies? Well, to some extent, I think it will be. Um, but, you know, I, I, the only hope I see with McCain, I mean, I see hope in all of them, but not for the Middle East, is that at the moment we, we do not have a single Western leader in any government who's ever had any experience of war. George Bush's experience was defending the skies of Texas and the Viet Cong, and uh, Tony Blair watches it on TV or goes to movies and watches Hollywood. At least McCain's been in a war, he knows what suffering is, he knows what death is. 
And war is primarily not about victory or defeat. It, is, it represents the total failure of the human spirit. But having listened to McCain, where he thinks that being in a war is a good qualification to be a president rather than ending wars, um, I don't really ho hold out a lot of hope. I'm a very cynical guy when it comes to US foreign policy and, and most Arab policies as well, frankly. How do you see the shift in uh, the global superpower status um, with the rise of China, India, and of course Russia researching a little bit? Yeah, well, I've, I've always said that the two people I'd like to have interviewed are the young Mussolini, who was ready to be so aggressive but didn't look like it at the time, and uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, you know, there's no doubt Russia is coming back as an empire, whether we like it or not. Uh, not the sort of uh, total secret police empire that we had before, though there are obviously ghosts of that around, as we know, the death of journalists and uh, Chechnya and so on. Um, I, I think that, you know, the Arabs are now looking for Russia to be the big restraining hand. They're still dreaming of those wonderful Cold War days when they could go off and, you know, meet Honecker in East Germany and Brezhnev and have some more missiles with pink tips on them and so on. Uh, that's probably a mistake. The Russians are not going to get involved in a Soviet-type Cold War with the United States. Uh, but they do want to be treated as equals, which is all the Arabs want at the end of the day. Robert Fist, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're listening to Riz Extra with Robert Fist, the renowned international journalist and author. His latest book is The Age of the Warrior, and you can read his writings in the British Independent newspaper. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Don't that you get a